When we think of raw video, we think of big cameras and the best image quality that a video camera can offer. Now, I recently got myself a Zcam Cinema camera that has access to raw video. But after using it for a bit, I started asking myself, do I really need raw video? Now before we go any further, I just want to point out how in this video, although I'm talking about raw video in general, I'll only be using what I have access to, which is Z-RAW. You see, there are different types of raw formats, like Ari raw R3D from RED, Blackmagic RAW, and Cinema DNG. Now I haven't used any other type of raw format, so just keep that in mind when watching this video, as different manufacturers might tackle raw video differently than Zcam. Raw video is a file format that is an unprocessed version of your video. So let me explain. When you film something with your phone and you review the footage, you don't get exactly what your phone saw. You see, the sensor of your phone sees the unprocessed image, but when you press the stop button, then your phone will process and compress the file. Usually this is done to get smaller file sizes. Now the problem with compressed video is that it leaves little flexibility for an editor to correct and change the colors later on. Now this is what's so special about RAW. RAW video is a fully unprocessed video, meaning to say that what the camera sees is what you'll get. This leaves you with the absolute best image quality that your camera can offer. The natural advantages of unprocessed images is that the footage just naturally looks better. The lack of compression and extra colors make things sharper, better looking, more color accurate, and with less color banding. But the real gem is when you get to the camera settings after the fact. You see, one of the main selling points of raw video is its flexibility. Of course the extra color depth makes it much easier to color grade without the footage falling apart. But raw video goes one step further by letting us change some camera settings like ISO and white balance after the fact. This makes raw video one of the more forgiving file formats. The special ability of raw makes it much easier for an editor to color correct footage and even to grade it. So we've talked about the magical nature of raw video, but what's the catch? Because no, raw is not all sunshines and rainbows. So although you get more flexibility after the fact, it also means that you need to invest more work to get your final images. Being unprocessed footage, we need to, you guessed it, process the footage. This adds to your workflow and the added options also means the added complications. This is something that with your phone you wouldn't need to do. This also means no more noise reduction. Usually mirrorless cameras like to add noise reduction so that they will look cleaner when using higher ISO levels. This is just part of their normal compression. But raw video is fully unprocessed. That means it doesn't process noise reduction. This is also something that you would need to add to your workflow. Lastly, the lack of compression also means bigger file sizes. Being unprocessed means that it needs to retain all that information. In my testing, raw video was three times bigger than an H.264 file on the same camera. Now we first need to understand that raw video is not a magic bullet that instantly makes your footage incredible. Raw video won't fix your bad composition, terrible lighting, or out of focus shot. A terrible cinematographer will still be bad despite them having such an advanced codec. Now what raw video is good at is changing your exposure and white balance in post-production. But here's the deal. For most of my shots, I found myself being really happy with the images that I had read out of the gate. Rarely do I need to change the white balance because most of my shots are shot at 5500 Kelvin. The feature that was the most useful for me was correcting my exposure with the ISO that I could now change after the fact. Still though, I found myself being able to do that relatively easily by dragging up or down the curves bar. So it's not that raw video was useless, it's more that as long as I did my job relatively correctly, I did not need the extra bells and whistles that raw video offered me. For the most part, I found myself enjoying Apple ProRes instead. Although I couldn't change the white balance in ISO, the robustness of ProRes 422 10-bit was more than enough for me. The file sizes were also smaller than RAW. Still though, ProRes files are still pretty file heavy compared to our normal H.264 file. Something nice with ProRes is that it runs super smoothly on your editing software. To run my RAW footage, I needed a super beefy gaming computer. But with ProRes, you could run it on an affordable laptop. If you're doing a high budget project, a blockbuster film, or a Netflix TV show, then raw video is probably something that you would want. 
Those are the types of projects in which you don't want anything to go wrong. If a shot becomes unusable, it costs a lot of money just to reshoot. But if you're doing a lower budget project or a YouTube video, then raw video is simply overkill. In that case, you're better off just getting better at composition and getting your exposure right. Because if you haven't mastered the exposure triangle, then you're probably not ready for raw video yet.